All right, everybody, it's Dean. I'm your multi genre music man. Welcome to the 3M family. If you're not part of the 3M family already, please hit the um, subscribe button, and that will make you part of the 3M family. Don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know when I'm live. I was actually live tonight. I told a story while I was live tonight that I don't think a lot of you are going to hear because a lot of you don't listen to the live stories, which is on a different section of my videos. Um, so I figured I'd t retell it here on here. Um, what happened was I had um, done a um, questionnaire or poll asking how many people wanted me to continue to do the Mr. Ballin um, stories. And like 68% said yes, they did want it. And I asked how many people wanted me to continue telling them my life stories. And like 58% said yes to that. So I'm going to keep telling the stories as long as I can. As long as I uh, still have them. I have a lot of mem memories of stories of things that have happened in my life that I'd like to share. Uh, tonight, um, I'll start by telling... Um, there was When I was 26 years old, I was dating this girl who was younger than me. She was probably 24, 23, somewhere like that. And when we first got together, we found out she was pregnant. Um, and she, it wasn't my child. She was pregnant like four months and didn't know it. Um, and I had decided that, you know, I was going to help her through it, you know, be the father of the baby, whatever I needed to do to help her through it. Well, the night that she decided to deliver the baby, uh, it, she knew it was coming. She said she knew she felt it was coming, but she thought she had a lot longer time because she'd had a baby before and she knew that she'd just be sitting around the hospital for hours. So she didn't want to do that. So all of a sudden she's like, okay, it's time to go. We gotta go. It's time. So I walk her downstairs to get in my truck and all of a sudden her water bursts at the bottom of the stairs outside. And we're like, she's like, the baby's coming now. She's like, we're not gonna be able to get in the truck. We gotta go back upstairs. So we came back here into my bedroom where I am now. My bed used to be, if I can show you here, my bed used to be along this way. Um, it was It was along this way. It stopped right here, and it used to go out there. It was a different bed at the time. It was a bigger bed. Um, and so I put her on the bed and uh, called 911 and asked them to send an ambulance right away because I didn't know what I was doing. But the baby was coming really fast, and the problem was the cord had wrapped around the baby's throat, and I didn't know how to get it off. And the lady on the phone, the 911 operator, was trying to explain to me to flip the baby over. And what she meant was to flip it this way, you know, turn it. And she just said turn it. It would have helped. She said flip it. And then I'm flipping it and it's not helping. And she should have said turn it and it would have it would have unwound the cord. And come to find out, the ambulance driver was downstairs. He was like, at the t he had actually come to the top of the stairs where I live. He was waiting and he was listening to me talk to 911 and just standing there not coming in. And I opened the door to go find out what the ambulance driver is doing. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, uh, I'm just trying to figure out what room I was supposed to go to. I'm like, this one, come in now. So he comes in and he helps me get the cord unwrapped around the baby, get the baby to cry so we knew it was fine. Um, and we had to, um, so we take it to the, take the baby to the hospital, take the mom to the hospital, wrap the baby up, take him to the hospital. And the baby's lungs weren't, um, developed correctly. So we had to, it had to be an incubator at the hospital that it was at in my hometown, but we had to take it to another state, which is a, uh, big hospital. If I said it, you'd know it was a, it's a, it's a, um, it's like, uh, say, Boston Medical. You know, Boston Medical is a huge hospital. It was like that. It's one of them type of hospitals that you could take people that are in really bad shape. And the baby was really sick, so we needed to take it there. And we stayed there. They had these really nice, like, hotel rooms for people to stay in while they're waiting for your baby. You could stay in these, like, hotel rooms and keep your baby next to you and stuff like that. It was really nice. Um... So the baby ended up being fine and all. Um, it, you, it, it grew up, you know, I, I, a year later we ended up separating, un, unfortunately, and I haven't seen the baby since. But 
I've heard that the baby's doing fine. He's like 15 years old now, and he's doing fine. Uh, 15 or 16 years old now, something like that. And he's doing fine. But it's just the shock of having, you know, when you're only 26 or 25 years old, and you're there delivering a baby on your own and you have no help or anything and you're like what am i supposed to do it's it's kind of like crazy you know you just all these things are going through your brain like and this operator is like make sure that you you know suction its nose and and because i had a suctioner we had a suctioner we had bought for the baby so that when um it had stuff in its nose we could get it out i happen to have one so i suctioned its nose and its mouth out real good so it could breathe and we got the cord wrapped you know off it and everything it was just a really freaky thing to go through when you're when you're only 26 years old and you've never delivered a baby before and it's and it's like wow what do you do you know and um luckily the baby um even though it had lung problems it it only ended up having to stay in the hospital for about a month um, and then it was able to come home, um, and we had to, it later got, um, some breathing problems. It had, like, asthma or something like that. We had to get some breathing stuff for it, um, to help, to help it breathe later on, but I guess it outgrew it, um, and it breathes fine now. Uh, it still has an allergy to, um, trying to think of a, some chemical they put in baby food. I can't think of what it, wheat or oat or something like that. Whatever I uh, uh, had, it, whatever it's called, they put it in the the baby formula, the powder formula, and it was allergic to it. It's still, uh, it's like stuff people that can't allow, uh, people can't drink milk. They're lactose intolerant. It couldn't have lactose, so uh, that was its main problem. And we found out later it was having problems breathing because it was getting lactose and it was vomiting it up and stuff like that. But the main thing is, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, it's, you, you think when, when something like that happens that you would never be able to handle it until it happens to you and then you can handle it. You know, it's just taking your time and looking at what's going on and, you know, and just deciding, you know, what you can do and what you can't do and what you need help with and getting on the phone with 911, putting it on, um, I put on speakerphone so that the mom could hear what she was saying and all that and everybody could hear and just going through step by step you know and doing what you got to do you know life throws you weird things sometimes and we just need to be able to take care of them and that's it it's simple as that you know a lot of times you know it's just learning what you need to do to do it um, I don't know if I told you this already but the funny story was when I saw the doctor later that day i said i don't know what you guys get paid so much money for i said it only took a minute for the baby to come out you get paid like a thousand dollars a pop i'm like i could do that all day long making a joke of course because i know most labors are very intensive and and way more intense than what i went through i understand that but there's the story of how i delivered a baby um and now you guys know um and that's just one of the stories that I'll be telling you. Um, like I said, I had 50 car accidents. I have a bunch of car accident stories I can still tell you. I've only told you about two. Uh, I told you about the guy with the uh, in the fire where I pulled his leg, accidentally pulled his fake leg off. You know, things like that that happen to people that don't normally happen to people that have happened to me that I have all stored up in my head that I'd like to tell somebody and and you guys seem interested in them so I think I'll I'll do different stories um where I tell you guys the stories so anyway this is Dean saying uh please don't forget to um hit the the um button for the the red button I can't think of subscribe button there we go sorry I've had my brain on something else uh the bell button and to leave a comment below if you have a comment about this story you can leave that if you have a comment about a song you want to hear just leave the link to the youtube page so i can get it easier um if you have a friend that sings that is not famous i'm even willing to put them on i've put people on that aren't famous on before and i'll do it again i have no problem with that 
Um, and down below that comment is um, how you can make a donation. You can make a donation through PayPal, or there's a bunch of other ones. I can't think of the name of them all right now. Um, but there's a bunch more. Um, and if I'm ever live, um, you can also do the super chat when I'm live, um, and it pays like five dollars. But you can type in a saying and have your saying go up. So you can do that. Uh, so watch for me being live. Uh, just watch the bell. It'll come up. If you, once you hit the bell, it'll come up and tell you when I'm live. So you'll know when I'm live. Other than that, this is Dean saying, have a wonderful day. And if you ever have to deliver a baby, stay calm, stay cool, stay collective, and you'll be able to deliver a baby too. This is Dean saying, have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next video.